Okay, so here is today's over the board league match. This is the fourth league match of this season that I've played. Um, for a switch up, my captain put me as white. I love playing as black. I know it's got its problems and issues playing as black, but I do love playing as black because you can bring out the unexpected playing as black. Playing as white, you're the lead. You, you're kind of expected to run the show, manage the, the opponent, control the squares, all that sort of stuff, and, and take the game home. So I can play as white, you know. I just favour playing as black. So in this game here, we opened up uh, nice and steadily with our trusted E4. Put up block down, nice and steady. I was um, I was aware that they were slightly higher than us um, with a provisional rating. And there's one key thing that is my nemesis when playing chess. And that is playing kids, teenagers. They just play weird. They play strong, unusually weird chess. My experience of playing against kids, um, sometimes I feel a bit sorry for them, you know, if they're like, actually losing. So <laughs> those games do make me laugh. But on the whole, playing against kids that know what they're doing and you can't feel sorry for them in any way, shape or form because they are actually really good. They are my nemesis. I mentioned this to my captain. I was concerned. So I came into this game thinking, okay, I will just go for a nice steady opening and just wait for the beautiful magic that these young players can bring to the table. Develop the knight, attacking the pawn, and develop the other knight. So it's all basic stuff, and then we've got the four knights on the board. So for a brief moment, I'm thinking, oh, this looks all right. Maybe we can cope with this basic opening. So we push through the center, all simple stuff, and just grab, and then... I class that as being art, you know, when they bring the bishop out rather than taking the knight. So I'm thinking, well, maybe they're losing tempo, but it's early doors. So we grab the knight, putting pressure onto the queen, and they capture. And we bring our bishop through, supporting the pawn. All simple stuff, nothing that we haven't seen before. Then the opponent attacks through the center. For a brief moment, I did think, oh, it's not castled. So they're looking to really try and stop us from castling somehow. They're giving us things to think about. I remember chuntering in my brain, not out loud. Um, Dude, go and castle. Let me go and castle. What are you putting this pressure on so early on in the game? So we captured. Nothing new and special there. And then they captured. And I did realise that, you know, there's potential for this pawn pushing down onto the knight. Because at this moment, they've got this x-ray through. So I could tell they were really wanting to push for that sort of position. So I wasn't shocked or surprised. I was ready for it. I thought, well, he's not gone on castle. So maybe I can turn the tables on them a little bit. So the bishop, bishop comes through. And I'm saying to myself, I've got a check on the king here. So I'm going to give him something to think about. Because I know exactly what it is that he's wanting to get from this um, position. You know, the magical position here. The knight comes back. So at this point in time, I did realise that, oh, well, the bishop can come here because we will have a two-on-one on the pawn. And because we're hitting a higher piece, maybe that's something for them to think about. In the longer term, obviously, I'm thinking, right, well, I think... He's probably going to push on to here. But then I, I jumped into my head about the fried liver type thing. And I thought, well, okay, if he's going to get my bishop and he's going to get my knight, you know, get this bishop off the board when it takes with the queen and it's going to take here, I could liken it to being like the fried liver because it's a knight and a bishop for the rook. 
I don't know if it's classed as up the exchange or not in those circumstances, but um, it's kind of like an equal exchange. It's just that they have more pieces on the board, but we have kind of stronger pieces and hopefully we can try and get a better position on the board. That's what I was hoping anyway. So we attacked the rook, attacking the pawn, and then they pushed down, as expected. So we grabbed the rook. Obviously, we didn't move this fast, took plenty of time over the moves, did my calculations, did say, well, okay, fried liver type situation now. It is risky, but at the same time, I believe this game has given me a different kind of outlook on how I do my evaluation and how I score my evaluation. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So the queen takes, so now basically they have got the knight and the bishop for the rook. They've not castled, we've not castled and I'm feeling fairly okay with the material we've got on the board. So we bring the bishop through now, looking to attack the um, unprotected pawn at the moment. But how do we get our rooks into the game? That was the key concern. And one of the key things was, I mean, they do have access to this pawn here with the queen. So does that give them even more? Because they're already plus one. If the queen takes, we're going to have to jostle our queen and maybe they could go for a draw. So as you can see, the actual, I ain't even got the evaluation bar on, but it's still showing the numbers. Let's throw the numbers in now. So it's showing minus 3.2. This was the thing I was going to talk about later on. I may as well talk about it now. And this is what has helped change my thought process when I'm doing the evaluation with the computer afterwards because there's a few games that I've played online and I've looked at them and I've been in situations that have been upwards of minus five and I've been able to claw things up, claw the game back quite nicely. Obviously you don't see the gauge bar when you're playing the game. So when I'm looking at it afterwards during the game, it didn't feel like there was a massive depreciation in any advantage that I had because my understanding of the game was I did X, Y and Z to get this type of position or to gain some sort of space advantage somewhere in the game. That the opponent didn't see any of those advantages that the um, gauge bar is showing, that ain't my fault. That's the human nature of chess and this is why I love it because when you're playing a human, they're not going to find all these computer moves. Unless, of course, you play in the higher up um, area and, you know, they, they play like computers. But by the time, if I ever get to a high level over the board, I'm hoping that maybe, I, I don't want to play like a computer, but I want to play like a humanized, a humanized board who can match a computer. There's a massive difference because then I can start doing quirky stuff against their computerized stuff. So I'm changing my thought process now because I said, well, once it re reaches minus two or plus two, um, depending, you know, and the opponent is like, um, win, well, showing advantage of minus two or plus, plus two, depending on what color they're playing. Then I says, oh, well, that's something for me to think about. But it isn't necessarily because during the game, I have my own rationale for each of the moves I'm making. And I'm quite adamant about the movements that I'm making, feeling fairly confident about the moves I'm making. And if I can claw back a game that is like minus five or plus five for the opponent, then there's got to be something in what we're actually doing. So when I'm looking at these evaluations now, the maximum I'll go for is five now. And it's a massive jump from minus two to, um, you know, or plus two to five. But I've basically realized that 
the minus two thing is not really a major it's not a major impact you can easily get that back quite nicely so you're talking five I've, I've even done it when it's been at eight and stuff like that you know and also when it's also been nearly checkmate because the opponent's been blindsided but for our average evaluation I've bumped it up to five minus five or plus five for the advantage that the opponent may have had in the game after we've done the evaluation so that makes it easier on my own brain because I do see quite a lot of minus twos and plus twos and I'm thinking yeah but that it's not impacting the game really is it I think an impact like I say I'm going to test it out as I've been doing it and I've been surviving with the pluses plus fives and minus fives so there must be something in that it's not that serious so you can use it to help develop and um, pick out better positions for yourself if you can make it work. Because as we've mentioned before, the computer's way of work working may not actually fit in with the way that you think. So you have to have your own kind of pattern recognitions, your own positions that you prefer to have, that you like playing. And from there, that's how you develop your own chess as you're going through. So that's a bit of a update on how I'm looking at the evaluations. Um, just looking at this bit here, I'll take the eval bar off after this section and because I just want to show this section. So they castled and then we castled. So it's minus 2.8, 2.9 at the moment. It looks serious because you see the bar there and you're like, oh man, you're nearly finished. But in reality, I'm happy with the position that we've got. Rook comes through now looking to x-ray through to our queen, which is it's all good stuff. And now our queen comes across, just taking itself away from the actual um, potential attack, but also attacking the bishop. And also noticing that this, this pawn's still ready to be taken. But we're not rushing that yet because we need to get our queen into a favourable position. So we've got pieces that we can already potentially attack. Nothing really majorly wrong with it, the position at all. Feeling fairly happy and comfortable. Only thing I was concerned about was how do I get my rooks into the game? Because the rooks need to be getting into the game. They've got these flexible pieces. The one piece I was more scared of out of all of them was the knight. And that's basic because, you know, I was a knight man and I know what the knights can do. They're very flexible. Whereas the bishops, I can sort of see where they're coming from. You know, they're just covering the diagonals and that's about it. Whereas the knight can be a good supporting tool for those bishops. And also help support the queen coming towards the king area, looking for some sort of checkmate position. So that was the only one I was really worried about. So they brought the bishop back and I thought, okay, this looks like a simple capture. So I'm happy to reduce down because it gets rid of their pieces for any trickery so as the pawns drop down you can see now there's one here that's got no protection and one here that doesn't have any protection so we bring the queen down targeting both the pawns so feeling fairly happy and relaxed but still thinking how do we get the rooks in but i'm kind of sitting waiting to see what they do i didn't want to pass up the opportunity of being able to maybe potentially snap up a pawn for a good position not greedy munching for a greedy munching sake so the knight moves down with capture and we're actually attacking the knight as you can see it's showing minus four here during the game didn't feel like there was any minus business going on all i was concerned about was yes they're flexible pieces they're they're out queen's target in the king area nothing supporting that at the minute potentially looking maybe to do a battery of some sort or maybe the queen just comes to go for an exchange. In any event, happy to work with the rooks against the bishop and the knight and the rook if it had to be that way. So I'm feeling fairly comfortable with this position, which is basically after I've brought it home and I've looked and I've gone, I wouldn't do anything different. 
So the bishop comes and does this funky move. I sat there for a minute. I thought, what is he doing? Why are we just giving up pieces? Obviously, the computer agrees with him. Um, it's at minus four still. So I'm thinking, all right, if I take, then obviously there's going to be a big issue. Yep, there's either this knight coming here, putting a check on the king, and then we have to scrabble around. It's got the, bishop, the queen targeting down here. So in any event, I'm thinking, well, I don't think that's going to wash with us. So I push the pawn up. But all the while, I know full well they're going to be looking to do this. They're going to be looking to do some arty business at some point with this knight. But we need to get a nice, decent position for our pieces. So they move the bishop out of the way, off of the check, but it's obviously coming to target the pawn here. And I started to sit there for a while thinking, well, it's not really a free pawn because even if he does take, the rook's just going to come here and behind his um, bishop is the pawn, so we'd get a pawn anyway. So I wasn't going to lose any sleep over trying to protect that pawn. So we brought the rook x-raying through to the um, rook. And this was where I'm thinking, yes, there's going to be some fancy business coming on because he's going to have a check on the king and they're going to be feeling really good about, oh, I've got them. And then the queen will be in front of our king, you know, taking the pawn. Taking the pawn. So I did see all of that fancy shenanigans. And the rook came down and put a check on the queen. Um, I didn't see that. I thought, well, when I did see it, I'm thinking, I don't know if that's helped them. I think that's helped us, which is good. And the gauge bar is actually agreeing with us. Just for a brief moment, it's agreeing with us. It's saying it's a draw at this moment. So we bring the queen up after a long deliberation, basically looking to actually attack here. Yep, so if we attack this pawn, this took a long while. I took a long time over thinking about these positions. Uh, so if we get to take this pawn here, because what I'm envisaging them wanting to do is bring the queen here and have a battery down through to our king. So that was the strongest manoeuvre that I thought they could put in place. So we will be in place to actually take this pawn and then we're still protecting this rook here. And we've got two pieces being able to protect. Because all I could think was, they're going to go for this fancy thing. You cannot resist that fancy thing. And hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe they forget themselves and they just get tunnel visioned and continue with that movement. So the queen came across from the calculations. Like I said, did not rush the game at all. Took my time. Looked at the calculations as best as possible. Looked at almost every continuation things like missing the rook move here i didn't know i didn't put that in my calculations because i thought i didn't think that was going to be played it, it's it's not really doing anything for them so now the the stage is set so we take the pawn with the queen and as we said most are set to actually take the pawn to look fancy to get the um the check on here and as we took the knight off the board. Bless them, poor opponent went, ah, it didn't see that the queen was protecting the rook because what they were looking, like we said, was looking for the battery coming down here. So they felt a little bit disappointed with that particular maneuver. But that goes to, you know, show calculation, taking your time with the calculations, um, looking a little bit deeper. And it did look good. You know, that knight taking the pawn stuff, they will have seen that a while back. But we also saw it a while back. That's why we developed our pieces to protect ourselves. So the rook comes across and puts a check on the king. So they're still playing on. I thought they were going to resign at that point. I, I did look up to them and think, oh, they're going to resign. But they carried on playing. That's a That's kids for you. You know, I'm thinking, damn, he's going to make me work for this. So we bring the king up just to come bring it to safety. Queen comes across now. He's looking to actually come down, take the pawn type situation. I'm thinking, I don't think I'm wearing any of them apples. There is a better move than what I played. I played blocking here, but either way, I'm, 
I'm not uh, I'm not too fussed because the computer suggests this move here and then if the queen takes then you get a back rank checkmate but it's not guaranteed to actually take the queen unless of course it's a forcing move of some sort I don't think it is really could go here couldn't he anyway I didn't believe I had that time I thought well let's just block it off as best possible so it's not too bad it's plus 4.4 but as we know in our new recalculation 4.4 can easily be beaten so it's not a major advantage at all in any way shape got to change that mindset because if I can come back from minus fives and plus fives so can the opponent as well so it's not no great shakes when you're talking like six seven eight then there's a there's probably concern that's more serious I've only learned that from just doing my own experience other people probably are already knew that but I like to learn and experience it myself. So the queen comes down and puts a check on the um, king and we bring the queen back. And they decide to take now. They looked a little bit fed up. And then they push the pawn down because they didn't want to get back ranked. Because the bishop's chomping at the bit to get this pawn here. So now we can push the pawn up. And at this point, it's looking at the blind spots, looking at your back end not rushing as we've said before based on the experiences of the previous over the board games and then the exercises that we've done to try and improve those games um coming to the upshot of having bringing back our attacking chess but it doesn't just mean just going out there willy-nilly you still have to look at what your opponent can potentially do to you so uh, this game, to me, typified the learning that we've done so far, really, because we really were patient. And I really was kind of, I said to myself, I've got to learn how to savour the moments as well. Because in bygone eras, I'd have been rushing these moves now, thinking, yeah, I'm winning, I'm winning. But I just took my time and I was savouring the fact that we were winning. And it's for us to lose it. it would, the only thing that could make it lose is us. So they went for the attack and we pushed the pawn up, keeping everything simple. This rook is protecting this pawn here. The white square bishop has not really got any angles to come in on, apart from coming all the way up here and attacking the pawn here. But this rook is still defending. And there's no need for us to power drive down onto these pawns here because we'll be wasting time and tempo so we just have to really just react to what the opponent's doing and slowly but surely incrementally kind of improve the position on the board and that's the part where the real chess kicks in based on that last pattern recognition type um video that i had done where basically it's looking at okay you want to be in comfortable positions positions you like and you want to stay away from positions you don't like and games can turn out to be as dry as possible you know but they're not dry to the player who's playing like this game is not dry to me it was brilliant in the way that we took our time savored the moments used the lessons learned from the previous games and really just dug deep and tried to block everything that the opponent was attempting to do it's so easy when you think you're winning to actually start, try and blast them out of the water. But I wanted to play chess. So we pushed the pawn up now. And obviously it's a stealth rook attack on the bishop. Sometimes people do forget, you know, because it's a forward motion of the pawn. But they actually saw it, so they were still awake. So the only thing I could see was the rook basically coming down and attacking the king potentially trying to get the bishop here attacking the pawn somehow because the king's too far over the other side of the board unless of course he could have started moving the king as waiting moves but we looked to um, double up the rooks now and that's the idea of the rooks basic stuff keep them doubled so now we can look to be a defender when the rook decides to start coming down and attacking the king but that will give us a slow incremental improvement in position as we'll see later in the game. So we push the pawn up now looking to block off any actions if they're looking to do all this type of stuff. 
and it's on a black square as well, so it's safe from the um, white square bishop. So the rook comes down and puts a check, so we can block that off. And they move back, and it's now attacking the pawn here, but the king's got nice space to actually defend. Comes back around, so it's potentially looking to grab this pawn with some funky business of this here. So we bring the rook down and just block simple chess. Simple, logical chess. So they bring the rook back up, so now we can attack the bishop. They come down with a check on the king and we can block it off, slowly, incrementally developing our pieces to improve our position on the board. So they de decide to capture, almost had enough there. So we can put a check on the king and bring the rook across, defending the pawn, and then just start pushing this pawn here. Uh, potentially there's going to be no kind of def defense against one of these pawns getting promoted. And my opponent extend, extended the hand and that at that point they resigned. And so far we've been very lucky with what we've been doing. I'm, I'll say lucky because, you know, at the end of the day, there is that element of luck. And we are doing a lot of training. We are doing a lot of practicing. And it's kind of paying off in that sense. So if we want to put it like that, yes, the training is providing better luck for us. That's all I gotta say.